Now would be a good time to talk about the common types of carboxylic acid derivatives as well. There are a bunch of compounds that kind of have this form. A carbon group, a carbonyl, and then some other electronegative element here at this position. And those are generally carboxylic acids or carboxylic acid derivatives. So let's see some of the things that could be at this L position over here. For example, we could put a halogen. Here I have chlorine, so this would be a halogen. Read my writing. These are called, the general name for this is acyl halides. This would be an acyl chloride, but in general, it could be an acyl bromide or in general, acyl halide. That's a name that I think students oftentimes forget, but this is called an acyl halide. It could, so it could be any halogen on it? Yeah. If it's chlorine, it's called an acyl chloride. And if it's bromine, it would be an acyl bromide. Those are the ones that come up commonly. I guess you could say an acyl iodide, although I don't remember seeing that too much. Usually, I think it's chlorine or bromine. By the way, this group right here is called an acyl group. If you just consider the carbon chain and the carbonyl as a group, that's considered an acyl group. There's lots of little names for the little different pieces here. If we just consider the carbon-oxygen double bond, that's considered, as we know, a carbonyl. But if we consider the carbon-oxygen double bond connected to a carbon chain, that's considered an acyl group. Well, now this is a very logical name, an acyl halide, because it's the acyl group connected to a halogen. Sometimes this might be called an alkanoyl halide, because another name for acyl is alkanoyl. I think that's less common than acyl, uh, but alkanoyl and acyl are basically the same thing. They're the carbon chain connected to the carbonyl. So acyl and alkanoyl are not really the names of functional groups. They're just little fragments that have names. Have you seen this type of molecule yet? The name of this is? Analdehyde. Ester. Let's go do that. This is what's called an anhydride. Oh. Has that come up yet in your class at all yet? Yes. All right. This is another one that, so I'm not surprised that you don't, guys don't know this name yet, because this is very early on. Uh, but the bad news is I find that even at the end of the course, oftentimes students haven't learned these names yet. So it's important to have these in their notes. This is an anhydride. So what is an, so what is an acyl halide? It's a carbonyl connected to a halogen. What is an anhydride? It's, a car it's two carbonyls connected by an oxygen, basically. The basic element of anhydride is two carbonyl carbons connected by an oxygen. It's very important for all of these to be able to identify the L group. You need to be able to identify exactly what the L group is. For an acyl halide, that should be easy. What's the L group in this molecule? The chlorine. But what's the L group in this molecule? Well, we could treat this whole thing right here as the L group. This oxygen and carbonyl. Or if we wanted to, we, we could look at it the other way and call this oxygen and this carbonyl the L group. But anyway, if we, if we treat this as the main carbonyl, then this oxygen and this fragment here would be the L group. What, what does L stand for here? It's leaving group? Yeah, or at least possible leaving group. One thing that all these will have in common is that the L group is always a possible leaving group. Sometimes not a great leaving group, but at least a possible leaving group. Uh, so this is definitely a possible leaving group over here. So this would be our L group. Here's another important type of carboxylic acid derivative. Now, this is what's called an ester. My experience is that students often like to guess that something's called an ester when it isn't. So this is what really an ester is. This 
This is our one and only ester. I, I can see how you get confused. There, there actually are some other types of things that are called esters, but at this point in the course, this is what we're going to mean when we talk about esters. I'm um, confused because of the O and O. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. So how can we how can we articulate the difference? Here we have a carbonyl connected to an oxygen connected to an alkane carbon, whereas here the oxygen is connected to a carbonyl carbon. So the big difference is. This oxygen is connected to a carbonyl carbon, whereas this oxygen is connected to an alkane carbon. I didn't actually bother drawing this carbon, but we know that in general it's conventional when we draw an R. We're assuming that the, the R carbon here is not something fancy, it's just a normal alkane carbon. So, to give an example. Here would be an example of an ester. Just a normal carbon chain over here connected to this oxygen. And here we have this. So who's the L group for the ester? OR. Yeah, the OR. Not this R over here. This isn't the leading group. It's the OR over here. That's the L group. What type of functional group is this? An ether. Yeah, I just brought that up because I noticed that people oftentimes seem to confuse ethers and esters. So we don't want to confuse ethers and esters. These are very different things. Obviously, ethers are not carboxylic acid derivatives. We just don't want to get them confused with esters. There's only one more type of carboxylic acid derivative. This is what's called an amide. Or a carboxylic amide. A carbonyl connected to a nitrogen carbonyl connected to the nitrogen. So who's the L group here? NH2. Yeah, the NH2 is the L group. Uh, but actually, these don't have to be hydrogens. This would also be an amide, where the nitrogen is connected to a carbon chain. So it can be any NR group? Yeah. Or there could even be two R groups. There'd be oxygen. So is this a carbonyl attached to a nitrogen? Yeah, basically it's a carbonyl connected to a nitrogen. When the nitrogen is connected then to hydrogens or to carbon chains. If there was any, something, something even fancier over here, like another oxygen or a carbonyl, it probably wouldn't be called an amide anymore. So basically these can be either hydrogens or carbon or alkyl groups. The nitrogen here can be attached to either hydrogens or but ordinary not carbon like chains. Oxygen. Yeah. Um, I can't think, uh, so if, uh, just to come up with an example. I don't think this would be called an amide. Okay, this is, this is too fancy over here. Okay, so um, these are hydrogens or um, plain vanilla carbon chains over here. This is our L group. group is this? Amine. Say it again. Yeah. Yeah. Amine. Good. <laughs> and what type of functional group is this? That's an amine with an I. There you go. That's right. That's why I was straining to hear. So we want to we have to exaggerate our pronunciations here to make sure we got this right. This is an amine and this is an imine. Obviously, these are not carboxylic acid derivatives. I just wanted to bring them up because it's easy to confuse those names with amide. So you might as well have all these confusing names in one place in your notes. Make sure that we don't get confused between amides, amines, and imines. And amines, amines, and amides. And amine. <laughs> oh, and there's also enamines. That's right. Enamines. Remember, an enamine is when you have an alkene carbon connected to a nitrogen. So this would be an enamine. An alkene carbon connected to a nitrogen. So there we have four names that you might get confused with each other. Mm -hmm.
Uh, and of all of these, only, only the amides are carboxylic acid derivatives. So these are the carboxylic acid derivatives here. These are just other names that are similar. Derivatives. 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 Now you can see how all these carboxylic acid derivatives look similar to each other, right? They all have an alkyl group connected to a carbonyl, and the difference is the L group over here. They all have different L groups, um, but in general they have the same forms as each other. 